Hello, my name is Andy Cantor and I'm director of the Columbia International eHealth Lab. Most of you know that as CL. And I'm also chief medical officer of intelligent medical objects known as IMO. And I'm gonna talk briefly today about our response to the COVID-19 pandemics, particularly in the area of concepts and terminology. There have been different information requirements over the course of this pandemic. In the early phases of the epidemic, it was really focused on testing, diagnosis, and reporting. The middle phase included the need for treatment management and contact tracing. And the later phases have really focused on research about how to tailor the response to this novel virus, as well as to understand what infrastructure is needed to respond to future threats, as well as the massive scale vaccination effort that's about to take place. But COVID-19 also exposed weaknesses in our health system. Code systems had to catch up quickly, new diagnosis, new diseases, exposures, and therapeutics. The requirements for case reporting by CDC and WHO were often underspecified, and key research variables were unknown and hard to define. And there were missing value sets or lists of codes that fulfilled certain use criteria. Just as an example, ICD-10-CM is a US coding system, but similar to the ICD-10-WHO codes. And they changed quite a bit. Pre-April 1st, there were a lot of generic codes that were used to try to capture the COVID-like conditions. But after April 1st, even though there had been specific WHO codes like U07.1 and U07.2 for COVID-19, was still fairly complicated to be able to capture specific information about the COVID disease. And even still, there were specific codes for things like exposures that could track directly to the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And we can't forget that there were hundreds of other codes that were added and required. SNOMED CT, for example, had produced terms for diagnoses investigations, and then prevention, treatment, and education. And they had multiple releases throughout the year. Loin codes, which are used for laboratory testing, released hundreds of codes that had to support all the different laboratories, as well as ask on order entry questions, therapeutics, case reporting, and even telehealth. And there were additional information that was required for capturing new medications, vaccines, et cetera. Here's an example of the WHO case reporting form. Although it's not no longer actually required to report cases of uh, COVID-19 infection, they do want to record information about clinical uh, outcomes of patients. And if you notice that there are specific questions related to COVID-19, or there were more general questions like liver disease without any specification of what actually that meant, as well as difficult to answer questions like whether a person was actually on the ventilator or not. Another area that we helped participate in was research. And this is the COVID-19 Healthcare Consortium that I'm showing here. But there were federated analytics that were pro provided for all sorts of um, different use cases, such as the uh, hydroxychloroquine and remdesivir. Another really important example of where terminology was needed and where we helped prepare was for the care guideline area. So this is an example from the computable patient guideline uh, emergency department severity score. This was an algorithm created to help uh, stratify patients based on their risk. And you can see the kinds of questions and data elements that are required and how CL was able to produce the um, appropriate maps to the standardized codes as well as have content for OpenMRS to capture that data. So COVID-19 pro pro uh, provided a challenge for CL as well as the OpenMRS community in that we had to be able to um, create the individual data elements and codes and concepts necessary for capturing the information through all the different use cases that I just mentioned. We were very fast and able to produce them and put them available in CL. We created the COVID-19 starter set, which is here shown available on the Open Concept Lab. And there'll be more information about OCL for OpenMRS and CL throughout the rest of this conference. Thank you for this opportunity.